Hi, I'm Robert Ito of Ito's White Tiger. Uh, this shooting will be on the orange belt outlying level in the White Tiger system. So I'm just going to run down through the same outlines that all of you orange belts should be using in, in your uh, keeping track of your progress. All right. First thing I want to go over with you novice rookie orange belts is uh, that in your practice you should continue to keep up your lower belt basics. Your, your kicks, your techniques, your katas, and so on. And then just add on to that your, your new orange belt material. All right. In orange, uh, there are three theories that I'd like all the orange belt to understand. These theories are listed in, in your outline as balance, power, and form. And once you understand these, then it'll give you a better idea of how to work with your different basics as you kick, as you block, as you go through your different movements and so on. All right. As far as balance is concerned, balance is a matter of controlling your body weight. And uh, a definition of that would be equal distribution of, of your body weight. Uh, normally, you need to understand this before you go into your kicks, during the kick, and after the kick. And if you start to lose your balance in any one direction, it means that you have excess weight going into that direction, in which case you would want to adjust that by using uh, your guard position or uh, being aware of where your hip position is and then making adjustments accordingly. If you do a kick and fall to your right, it means that your weight is over to the right side. If you do a kick, and fall back, it means your weight is going to the rear. So you have to equalize that and you have to make the adjustments. There's nothing I can do with that other than tell you your balance is off, you need to keep your head up and your guards up. All right, so this is your practice. Uh, as far as power is concerned, a lot of your movements in white and yellow, uh, you're still starting to become, actually you were started off awkward and mechanical and you're just starting to feel a little more confident and you're starting to smooth it out and this is good. Uh, behind these movements you want to start placing some power behind these movements. To put power behind it you have to understand how you develop power in the physical sense of your movements. All right. There's three things that you need to understand as a beginning student. To get power you need to control your body weight. To control your body weight, you need to use your stances. Your stances will give you stability. Stability gives you control, and then you can place your body where you want it to deliver your kicks, your blocks, or your strikes. The last thing you want to do to get more power in your movements is to add speed to that. If you start speed in the early part of your training, it normally gets your movements real sloppy, in which case it's very difficult to deliver power with balance and control. All right, so speed we will work uh, in more detail in the purple belt level. All right. Uh, the other theory that we need to work on or, or discuss here is form. And form, the form uh, as people uh, use in definition is, I guess you could say, is, is the correct way of doing something. You have good form if you, if you do it that way. Uh, if you don't do it the correct way, then it looks terrible and you have terrible form. The definition that I would use is that to have form, you need to understand focus and definition. All right, definition means definition of your basics in which you are performing, and the knowledge of these these basics, and focus as in you have to concentrate and mentally focus on how it is you want to do it. Then you need to visually focus on where you're going to do it or where this strike is coming from. And then you have to physically focus and place your blocks or your strikes or your kicks where it's supposed to go. So form is a combination of all of this. You need to have focus and definition in your movements. Now watch. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over a couple of the uh, orange belt kicks. The first one is called a crescent kick. And a crescent kick, what I'll do is I'll break it down the same way as I did in the uh, earlier basic kicks, and that, that is four basic movements. On your crescent kick, you'll be striking 
with the inside part of your, your foot coming up over here. The four count movement on this crescent kick from your side horse posture from here. One is that you'll bring up your leg like a roundhouse and then rotate your hip straight, snap, and then come right back. And then back. That's your crescent kick. Your crescent kick in combination can also be used uh, with a side kick and or a rear kick. So if you have, a, let's say, a weapons attack, from here you could use a crescent kick as a block. Bam, kick, and then move out of the way. You could do the same thing with rear kick. All right. The other kick in orange that uh, you need to know is called a wheel kick. And your wheel kick is kind of a cousin to your roundhouse. You still use your crane like a forward snap kick, and then you turn like a roundhouse and finish the kick off like a roundhouse. So your, your wheel kick is like a forward snap kick and a roundhouse. It starts like a forward snap kick, and then rotate, kick, and then come right back. All right? Uh, in orange, what you're going to start to do in orange is you're also going to add more power into your kicks. This power movement or, or motion is called a thrust kick. The thrusting motion does not change the mechanics of the kick. You will still go through your same basic four count movement. Example, side thrust. I'll do this to the side here. In a side thrust, it's the same in movement as in your side snapping kick. You still have one, two, three, and then you're back down four. That's your snap. And then that's your thrust. So if you did a forward snap kick from here, and that's your thrust kick, and so on. If you did a rear kick, rear thrust, and then back. All right. Now, to deliver a proper thrust in any direction from any of your kicks, your legs should be stronger as an orange belt. So you need to use a lot of exercise in developing the strength in your legs for your thrust kicks. Otherwise, you won't have a good thrust kick. Uh, uh, one of the exercises that you'll be going through is from a broken bow position. A broken bow, this is a new stance now, is from a side horse. This is your hard bow, your front stance. Your broken bow, from here your back leg will bend. And as you stay in this posture, in a, an exaggerated posture, wide from here, this will put pressure on your quads on both your front and your rear leg as you go through all your kicking drills. So from here you could use this as a snapping motion or and then coming back down again. All right. And if you use all your, your kicks on each side in all your drills and bend your knees and, and get it extended and wide, then you'll start to develop some strength in your legs as you do these kicks. All right, and this is a standard exercise in the orange belt level. Uh, another exercise that you will be using to develop your, your kicking and your balance in general is called pivoting crane. Now, this one here takes a little more practice. What you do is that you hold your, your leg up. In this case, I'll do this. And hold it first into a cat stance, you cross your dodge and then hold it into your crane posture. And then you would start to move forward by pivoting, heel, toe, and so on, and then coming back. What this does is that it starts to use all the muscles in your ankles and your calves and up where a lot of your balance and your stability starts. And this will strengthen your legs from the bottom and you work way up. When you get into your broken bow posture from here, this starts to develop strength around the knees on both sides. So if you use both of these exercises, not only will you strengthen your legs, but you should have better balance and better stability as you go. Uh, coordination of your movement. From your broken bow motion or posture from here, when you do your kicks, you, can, you start going into cross-step exercises. All right, that cross step is also called jujidach. From here, 
as you do any kick, forward snap, side kick, thrust, or whatever, you would then cross to the opposite side. So as you come in, let me move back here. As you come in, snap, cross step, and then get back into your broken bow. It could be a roundhouse, cross step, back into a broken bow, crescent, cross step, back into a broken bow. As you do this, your balance or your pivot leg should always be turning and rotating to move back and forth. And this is good to know and good, good to know that you can get all that pivot in there so that your hip is always moving into your kicks. All right? So you, you don't even have to keep it into a single kick. You can go into a double combination. Forward stamp kick, roundhouse, cross step, side horse. and so on. You could go into a triple kick. And I believe that all these combinations that I use are listed in your outline. Now watch. All right, the next thing we're gonna go over is the, uh, some of the requirements of ground defense uh, in orange. The first thing we're gonna do is call the forward break fall. And I will, I will have Sensei demonstrate the forward break fall and how it would be used and then I will break it down uh, step by step uh, so you have a way of practicing it uh, without actually falling in the beginning, okay? Now you would do this if you don't have room to roll or you are kept from rolling from maybe a leg sweep and a push, like that, all right, thank you. Now, a good way to practice this is from a kneeling position from here. Now, all you're going to do from there is to kind of fall forward and have your hands right in front of you in a triangle, all right? Right in front of your face or right around your chin area. And as you come down, turn your head to the side so that you don't smash your nose on the floor, all right? So from here, as you come down, you want to use a key eye. And that will be uh, at the same time in which you have impact with your hands on the ground. When you do this, do not lock your arms out like this. If you come down hard, uh, you'll, you'll have a tendency to injure yourself in the shoulder. So your arms should always be bent as you come down. Use a key eye so that as part of the, uh, the impact, you'll be using your breathing to absorb the impact of coming down. All right, so from here, Come down, place, and then start off again, all right? When you come down, you should be coming down flat on your hands and then your forearm secondary as you come down. That way you'll be using some of the muscles in your arms to absorb the motion of impact, all right? As you get better at this, then you should be practicing from an up position coming down, coming down, place, and then come down. All right, I don't expect you to do that right away, but work your way up to the point where you could do that. Uh, you have to develop some strength in your arms so that you can come down from a standing position. The exercise for that, push-ups. All right, now, backward break fall. Sensei. Same thing, you're gonna fall back and not roll. You're, you're prevented from rolling for some reason or another, and as you're, you're going back, both hands will come out and hit the ground at the same time from here with a key eye. Nice. There you go. Thank you. Now, to begin with, then to start off, you want to start from a sitting position. Actually, I'll do it this way so you can see. As you roll, you want to see your low back, as it starts to touch the mat from here, your both hands, arms bent, open hand, just to the outside of your hips, will start to hit the mat. And this is just to get the feel of when your arms should come out and make contact with the, uh, with the floor. Now when you do this from here, don't get your hands in a tight fist and don't hit with the back or the side. You'll hurt your hands. Your open hands loose will absorb the impact and it'll sting a little bit, but as you get used to it, it won't, it won't damage anything. All right, so you'd be coming down like so. And this is just to get the, the timing, position, and posture where your arm is and your body 
being horizontal with the floor. All right? As you go through this, then you can get yourself off balance from a standing posture. And to do this, you can just kind of kick your leg out from here and then start to sit down and go back. And then just kick your other leg out and hit your arms out the same way as you did from a sitting position. All right. So as a beginner, you want to use both hands in the break fall, but later as you move on, is that actually you don't, you don't use a backward break fall, you use a side break fall, and that is one arm later. So from here, you're going to come down. Now you want to make contact with the floor before the rest of your body comes down. Your hands will absorb 80% of the impact, and then you're just cushioning yourself back down. It will not prevent out on the street you from not getting a bruise, but it will prevent you from breaking your body. All right. Uh, the next ground defense is called forward roll break fall. In the event you go into a forward roll, but you don't want to get back up, you want to put the brakes up in your roll and stay down, then you would go into a forward roll break fall. All right. Sometimes you don't want to get up maybe because you're going to run into something else as you get up. So when you come down, you're going to go down into your forward roll as you learned previously in white yellow. And then this arm here goes into a break fall and then you get your legs in position and posture to stop. All right. And then from here, this is your defensive posture or your ground cover. All right. Your ground cover means your fighting guard is, is in position and then your legs are used as a guard position also. This is not different from a fighting guard like this. All right, the only difference is that you are on the ground. So we call this our ground cover. From your ground cover, you can switch sides. And when you switch sides on your ground cover, we call that a flip-flop. It is the same as switching sides from here. All right, so if you're in a ground cover with your right side down here and the person starts to move to your left side, then you just switch sides. If he comes back, then we call this a flip-flop. Now, as I speak through this, I'm not using a key eye because I'm trying to talk and explain this as we go through it, but correct movement should be with a key eye as we go through it. All right, now, if that person starts to continue to go around you, then you should pivot as you go, then flip flop, and then start to pivot. All right, and that's called our uh, ground pivot. If he comes in and kick, as he starts to come in, then you can get out by using your cross step. We call this the cross out escape, and that cross step is called juji dodge. From here, Another type of escape that you can use from your down position is a backward roll escape. So if he comes in and you happen to get him tripped up or go into a kick from here, then from here you can go back into a backward roll and then get back up. So you have two escapes that you could work on as a beginner. One is your cross step, juji dodge, and then your backward roll. Backward roll escape. You have your flip flop to change direction your ground cover and then you have your your pivot if it continues into one direction now watch the next thing we're going to do here is called kata two it's also called long one um, in kata two i like to really break it down uh, in, in three different parts the first part of the motion or movements that you're you're working you're going to be combining two stances. You have your hangutsu dodge, which is your side horse, and your hard bow. And to be able to get of motion as you go through. Another thing about the kata 2 in part 1 is that you are going through motions that are referred to in your, your, your boxing and your fighting uh, kickboxing class as your three punch combination. And actually, with your blocks, two punch combination, three punch combination type motion is all in your kata two. All right. Then you go into part two 
you have your triple sets and your triple sets places you with one two motions from both sides coming back you have inward out inward out inward out inward out and so on triple sets coming back so you have to get your body movement back and forth working as you go through then you have your stationary posture in part three now in the beginning you'll use this as a, a way of isolating your lower body here and just work and stretch out your your trunk from the waist up as you go through your punches into different angles as you come come in uh, later when you go through this this will be changed and adjusted so that you would also use a change of hip rotations as you go through all right so as you continue in the process of progressing all your movements should also progress and that there are reasons for exaggeration in stances and that is for stretching for exercise for flexibility for range of movement and so on and then there's a reason to do different things and as you go you should be able to do all of them all right all of them so I will perform kata 2 parts 1 2 and 3 using hard bow side horse uh, block combinations with a punch uh, triple set movements one two one two one two from a side horse and then the stationary posture with different angles of striking and blocking all right cut the two The next form that uh, I'm, I will go through is called Taikyoko. Uh, Taikyoko originally came from the Shotokan uh, system. It was developed by Gishin Finagoshi. Um, in Bakfu, it was used in the uh, in a brown belt level with uh, some variations in, uh, uh, in posture. But uh, the way I'm using this in this uh, video is closer back to the uh, original traditional form. Uh, the combination I'm using is to relate it to kata one, which is the inward outward, inward upward, reverse hand downward combinations. All right. And as far as the punches, as you go through, you're using a front lead punch in kata two. So 
The use of the front stance was in coots with lead punch and power punches between your kata two and your, your tekioko forms will cover that. You have your, your lunge punch and you have your power punch, okay, which is yakuzuk, uizuk. So there's, there's, it covers a lot of the, the, the basics as far as the, uh, the use of your, your front stance or zenkuts, also called hard bow. All right. Now there's three variations in Taikyoko. The first variation in Shodan, we're using reverse hand downward. Okay. The second is using inward outward, and then the third is using inward upward. For the video, I will just perform the first one, Shodan. All right. All right, we are going to now go through the, uh, the standard techniques in orange. We are starting with uh, eagle pin A. Now in eagle pin, there is two attacks, but I only have one uke, all right? So this uke will play both parts. There is a person behind me, and he's got me in a bear hug, holding me as this guy's coming in with the right punch. All right, so now that everybody sees that, from here, we're gonna go through it slowly. Walk, yeah. kick, and then the guy behind me comes in. I'm stepping to the side from here, right yeah. the elbows, sweep, elbow, yeah. hammer fist, turn, kick, and out. We'll just kind of do this medium because you have to move and, uh, and get behind me. Ready? Move. Yes! All right, on B, the attack is the same. Go. Got. Sweep. Yeah. Bow. Down. Yeah. Next technique is drawbridge. This is a shoulder grab, all right? From that shoulder grab, trapping, stepping in, hammer fist to the collarbone, sweep. And again. That's drawbridge A. In drawbridge B, slow. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Breaking over the knee. Hand staff. Overhead strike with a club. Yes. And again, go. Yes. B 
variation, overhead strike again. Bam, step across, yeah. drive the opponent down, breaking the arm. Go. C variation. Slow. Two-man attack. <laughs> Throwing him into the second guy. Go. The next three techniques that we will go through will be flashing wings, opening cowl, and kung fu cross. So, in flashing wings, it's a right punch attack, inward block, form through the ribs, elbow to the back, chop to the back of the neck, chop to the kidney, and then from here, heel of hand to the chin. In this case, what I'll do here is that I will come in and yeah. punch right into the, uh, the sternum to drive the person back, all right? Now, in a lot of these techniques, I will make slight adjustments so that I get to use my uke over again, all right? So let me go through that slowly again. So from here, block, four, uh, elbow, uh, and then uh, And again, ready, go. Next technique is opening cowl. An opening cowl is a rear choke. In A, you're gonna step back. From here, as you step back, you're starting to sweep his arms out of the way as you go through the form to the ribs. Yeah. And then punch, yeah. punch, yeah. and drive him back. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, opening cow B, same attack, only maybe he's kind of lean on you a little more. So you step forward. As you step forward, you do the same thing. Punch, punch, punch. Yeah. Yeah. The difference is that you don't use a forearm, you go right into more extension, which is three punches. Notice that I use the first punch lower to keep his head towards me and the upper body towards me, and then finish him off by driving back on the last two strikes higher, which actually would go to the head. Next technique is Kung Fu Cross. And Kung Fu Cross, A variation, it's a right punch, all right? The punch comes in, you step back, counter grab, yeah. kick to the groin, grab yeah. the throat, break the arm, yeah. knock yes. the arms away. You have room? Yes, sir. All right, ready, and go. On B, it's a left punch attack. Step back, break. Yeah. Hammer fist to the groin, and then yeah. out. Again, left. Yeah. All right. Was that, yes, that was B. Now, watch. All right, our next technique is gonna start off with attacking the wall. Now in attacking the wall, you're backed up against some wall area, and then from here, the person comes in with a punch, and then you move out of the way with a strike, and you go into your counters, all right? Now, we'll do this from out here, slowly. Let's see, back up a little bit here. All right, so from here, you come to block, hammer fist, kick, all right, and again, go. Okay. 
On B, the attack is basically the same. There's a wall behind me, and there is a right punch. Coming in, yeah. one, strike. Yeah. It's right. Okay, next technique is snapping twig. This is a left punch technique. Come in slow, snap the arm, double heel, one of the wrist, one of the elbow, bring him in, hammer fist to the side of the head, shuffle forward, forearm, hammer fist, back knuckle. Left, and go. Next technique is the dart. Now this one's a little more dangerous, so what I'll do is I'll show you the dart technique and then I'll modify the strike. So this is a left punch. From here, I shot. From here, go. Yes! Okay, on B, slow, left punch. You're coming in, I shot, coming in. I will modify that to a punch. Yes! Next technique is wing break. The attack and wing breaks from the side, grabbing and pulling. You step in, strike, yeah. circle around. Yeah. Now watch. Our next series of techniques will begin with Circle of China. The first technique, a variation, will start off from a one knee up position. The attack is a forward snap kick, slowly. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Yeah. All right. Go. Circle of China B is done from a Seiza position or kneeling position from here. Ready? So, bam. Up, Hit. kick, yeah. and down. We just do it like that. And go. Yeah. 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 All right. Falling bridge. The attack and falling bridge. It's from behind. On A, it comes yeah. in. It. Kick, up, yeah. down, and then yeah. down. Yeah. Come down, make sure you come down. Remember, forearm will hit you. Hey. Hey. So, falling bridge A, on the moss. From here, On B, the attack, same. We're stepping out, opposite side. Yeah. Yeah. Break, yeah. knee, yeah. smash, up. Yes. Yeah. 
Same thing, different angle. From here. Next technique is Dance of Tigers. Attack, right punch. And a technique. Slashing wings. Right punch. One more. All right. Crashing elbows. Right punch slow. Yeah. Turn. Boom. And go. Now watch. In conclusion, there are things that you, you need to understand as far as this tape series, and that is that this should not be the only source of information. You still should be in class with the observations of your instructor giving you pointers of the things that you should be working on individually and personally. Um, in your practice, you must strive to continue in attitude to improve and do the things that you first learn, call basics, do it better, better, and better. And as you do that, then you'll be able to do it in any type of environment, in which case you have improved. So improve basics and the attitude to improve continually is your main practice. Have fun with the tape.